Basketball season is in full swing. I've been working with a lot of jumping athletes lately, a lot of kids trying to get their first dump. So I thought I'd get on here and share with you how I go about training vertical jump. So here are five tips to get you started on training and improving your bounce. Tip number one, improve your vertical force production. Newton's third law of motion says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This means that the harder that you push down into the ground, the harder the ground will push you back up. Magnitude through that force relative to your body weight determines how high off the ground you can jump. So if you're not squatting or deadlifting at least one and a half to two times body weight, then building more lower body strength can give you an easy boost to your vertical jump capabilities. I like to use split squats, tri bar deadlifts, and step ups with relatively heavy weight in the three to five rep range to build that lower body strength, but plenty of other variations can work well too. Tip number two, altitude drops. Altitude drops are a great way to overload the eccentric component of your jumps and learn to handle high forces in a short amount of time. Just like in the weight room, if you can't slowly control the weight down, it's unlikely that you'll be able to push it back up because we're stronger eccentrically than we are concentrically. With jumping, if you can't control landing on the way down, then it's unlikely that you're going to be able to jump that high. Landing from a super maximal height will train you to decelerate quickly on the way down and speed up the reversal time on the way up, leading to a higher jump. Start with an elevation about six inches higher than your best vertical jump and practice jumping off and staking the landing. When you can land easily without too much bend in the hips or the knees, raise the elevation three to six inches and start over. Tip number three, resisted and repeat jumps. Jumping is a very fast and powerful movement while heavy lifting is slow and deliberate. Your weight room work will translate up to a certain point, but after that, the lack of speed leaves a gap in specificity in improving the vertical jump. By using resisted and repeat jumps, we can bridge that gap by still requiring more force from the lower body to leave the ground, but also being performed considerably faster than most movements you would do in the weight room. Repeat jumps depend on the elastic properties of your musculature. Your muscles and tendons will stretch and store energy with each landing, then snap back and contract, propelling you higher into the air with each jump. Resisted jumps will speed up the counter movement phase, create higher force more quickly to leave the ground. Force and velocity are king when it comes to explosiveness, so you can use these to maximize both in your program. Tip number four, practice proper technique. This one's simple, but it often gets overlooked. Like anything, jumping is a skill. Make sure you're getting plenty of reps jumping off both feet and each foot individually. Most people will find that they're naturally better jumping off of one foot or two, but practicing different variations will have plenty of carryover into your other jumping styles. I will usually videotape my athletes' jumps and dissect any portion of the movement that may be inefficient. A couple things to look for are a relatively vertical torso, proper footwork, and an arm swing in sync with the hips. Often you can add one to three inches onto your vertical just by syncing everything up and using proper technique. Tip number five, horizontal into vertical. This one is more important for dunking and approach jumps specifically rather than your standard vertical jump. You'd think with a one-step or multi-step approach, you'd jump higher, but for many, that's not the case. Learning to turn horizontal momentum into vertical can be a game changer. Just like you use stored energy from landing on a repeat jump, you can use horizontal energy from your approach to boost you higher into the air. Very rarely in basketball will you be jumping straight up and down multiple times in a row. Usually you're taking off after a gather or on the run, so practicing redirecting your momentum from forward to up will help you get that extra boost of bounce on the court. I like to start with simple one-step approach jumps, then add more steps along the way to increase speed. You want to maintain a slightly squatted hip into the jump with your plant foot landing in front of your center of mass to decelerate horizontally. As you transition into the jump, the second foot should strike just outside of the hip and violently punch you into the air. 